Hi, I'm going to attempt to um, model this CO2 cartridge dragster or race car. Uh, and this SketchUp is really, really useful because we can pre visualize where our cuts should go to try to give the thing some style before we actually commit to working it in the shop. And it'll also make sure that our proportions are all right and everything's going to work out properly. So here's how you might get started with something like this. I'm going to start with a brand new blank canvas and I'm starting from a top view. And I'll start by modeling the stock that you're going to be using. So starting at the origin, I'm going to drag up to try to model a piece of stock made of pine. And I know that the thickness of this is 7 eighths of an inch and that the model should be about 12 inches when it's done. So there's the piece of stock down there and I can quickly zoom to it by zooming extents and taking a look at it. The height of the, st of the stock car racer should be about two and a half inches, so I'll pull that up by about two and a half, and I've got a good simulation for the piece of stock you'll be working with. Now to make this thing happen, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to laminate two pieces of stock together to give it some extra width, and um, we can emulate this in SketchUp by triple clicking the object that we've just made, the stock, and I'm going to turn this thing into a component with a right mouse click. So a right mouse click, make component, and create. And I'm going to then pull this thing over. I could copy and paste it. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just copy and paste it? It's the easiest thing to do. Control C and a Control V allows me to put it just about anywhere. But here's one more little trick that I'm going to do to this thing first. Components are kind of neat because when you do something to one component, the same thing happens to the other. This is the superpower you have. And this is what's going to help us with a little bit of symmetry. So if I were to draw something on it like that, you get two of those things attached to each of the components. Okay, so they work in parallel and this makes life nice and simple. But we want this thing to, if we want to have something happen on this side of this piece of stock, we want it to happen to this one over here. So we really want a mirror image of the component and that's pretty easy to do too. If I select that component like that, actually if I just select it like this I guess does it, I'm going to use the scale tool and when you use the scale tool you get all these handles that you can start stretching and I'm going to use the one dead center in this face and I'm going to pull it over to flip it a mirror version and if I drag it to a certain point it's eventually going to snap aha I can see the snaps right about here so what I have is a complete mirror of the original piece and now I'll laminate the two of them together virtually by hovering over that corner point and lining it up with this corner point and that's the idea of the lamination so now when I start sketching on this piece the same thing will happen to the far piece and this will let us get perfect symmetry as we put this thing together now normally I'd be dragging guidelines to where I want to put bits and pieces by the way as you edit this be inside the component you should be seeing a bounding box around the outside of it as you're editing it because if you don't, you're not going to get the same results. So when we edit a component, we've got to make sure we're in the component at all times. So I'm going to, to uh, mock something up. And you'll notice the guidelines are being echoed on the other side. We'll just ignore that other side for now. And I'm going to very quickly make a profile for this thing. And like I say, this is not anything fancy by any means. I should be much more careful if... I really was concerned about this. There we go. Um, but I'm just do doing this quickly to try to show you what's going on with the thing. Now I'm going to push this part here to start sculpting out, sculpting out the profile of it. And the idea of this SketchUp is that you can pre-visualize all the designs that you might have in your head and try to come up with the best possible design before you actually commit the thing to stock. So you're getting the idea how this is going to get put together, but I'm going to show you one more trick that lets you sculpt the side of this thing in symmetry as well. And this is a really good trick. So I'm going to go to a top view now. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to carve out one side of this thing so that I get a little bit of um, a little more streamlining to what's going on and, and give it a lot more style and shape. It was easy to do that profile, but the streamlining happens best like this, I think. Uh, first off, Let's see, I'll, uh, I'm still inside the component. I have to be inside the component. And I'm going to try to find some points to begin with. I'm going to try to find a point here. I'd like at this point to drive a little chunk in at a sort of a 45 degree angle or so. And it's only going to be a little bit like this. You could be a lot more precise if you drag some guidelines to do the job. To tell you what, I'm going to do this really quickly. 
and this is not nearly as good as I would normally try to make it. Now I'm just going to try to get the job done here. Okay, so what I've created here is like a cookie cutter that I can shove down on the thing. A better word would be a die for it. And I'm going to pull this up in three dimensions so that this will start carving things in three dimensions. And before I go any further, I'm also going to double click this thing and I'm going to group this thing so it's easy to separate from the, uh, the original shapes, planes and faces. So here's how this thing works. I'm going to go take a look at it from the top view, grab the component, and I'm going to start moving it in to where I want it to start cutting stuff away. And you can see in the, in the, uh, the mirror image, the same thing's happening. So you can get an idea of what this thing is going to sculpt like by the time we're done. And I'm just going to place it there. I, I know it's not the best possible place for it. But again, I'm doing this quickly just to get through the de demonstration. Now, to, to carve this chunk away from this chunk, now we have just have to, ch to select all the bits and pieces. So I'm going to triple click this part, hold the shift key down, and grab this part here the die. And now, as everything's been all selected, we can draw the lines where these things intersect by right mouse clicking and intersecting the faces with model. And now I'm done with this die, so I'm going to simply delete it and I'm left with the lines that this thing just created. Now it's getting really confusing with all the other guidelines, so I'm going to start by maybe erasing a few of these things. Oh, doesn't seem to let me. And if it doesn't let you, it's because those guidelines are outside the component groups. Oh, no, managed to get them that time. Now, to get rid of these chunks, I can again use the eraser and erase a line and watch what happens. It starts to carve this thing out and you can see that the thing's hollow. Be careful not to, de to delete too many lines. All I want to do is get rid of those, uh, those lines that I really don't need. And now I want to restore the faces that I have that got deleted because I lost a line, I lost the faces. And this is really easy. If there are four points that are all in the same plane that deserve to have a face. All you have to do is restore one of the edges that helps define that surface and it all comes back. And so I think I only have to do a couple of these to bring back the faces that I wanted. And now what I've got is the start to that dragster and I've got the, uh, the thing all carved out. Naturally you want to be careful with how thick this is going to be but it'll be just as strong as the original piece that was you know, if it, uh, if it was a solid piece of wood, it doesn't matter that these two are glued together. They'll support each other and it'll be pretty darn good. Uh, and then next, naturally, you could be drawing uh, wheels and all that sort of stuff. So um, not a bad point at this point in time, although this thing is a component, you can still triple click it inside the component and group it. You can have a group inside your component if you're happy with that. And then when you start drawing things like wheels and the like, they won't interfere. So I might draw a wheel like this and pull the thing out for whatever the thickness is. Oops. And you get the idea. You can start putting the entire thing together. Naturally, there's lots more detail that goes into it, but those are some fundamental ideas of how you can sculpt this thing out pretty easily and with deadly accuracy. Good luck. Have fun.